So all we have to do today is go over homework problems on poly 4 and poly 5. So now is the time to write them all in order if you need to. So that's it, 4, 5, and 6 for which one? Is this poly 4 or poly 5? Now is the time to ask people. Okay, I guess we better start with poly 4. Nobody want to shout one out? Everybody got it all correct. I can come around now with my grade book. Remember. Tell it. All correct. Some of you get guilty faces. So which one? Number eight. Four. Well, now they all come up. Okay, number four. Now, you guys better understand this upper bound, lower bound thing. Now, Gareth, Gareth's barbarians is on Monday, please. Okay, so you're given a polynomial equation. So let's write the coefficients down to, this is on poly four now. Poly four. Two, two, seven. 6, negative 5, negative 3. Find the smallest positive integer that is an upper bound. Oh, come on. Okay, so what number should I start with? 1. We're looking for the smallest one, right? So 1, so 2, 2, negative 5. Is that an upper bound already? No. Yeah. No, what are we looking for for an upper bound? When you synthetically divide by a positive number, you're looking for all of these coefficients to be non-negative. So look, you got a negative one there already, so it stop. Then we try Three. four. What if you what if two is it though? So four. So two. Oh you mean like that? Three so, smaller. so no can. Yeah. So even three no can. Yeah. So two, because that's gonna be six and negative one. So gotta be four. Oh you guys are oh, you guys are smarter than you look. So four. Drop the two down. A one four. 10, 40, 35, 140, 137. Yes, this is an upper bound. That's the smallest one, so there you go. Now it says find the largest negative number that's a lower bound. So what number should I try? What are we looking for for a lower bound? We're looking for alternating. Okay, so drop the 2 down, negative 2, negative 9. 9, 15, negative 15, negative 20. 20, 17. Is negative 1 a lower bound? Yes, because it's alternating. <coughs> so there you go. We got it on the first one. That's it. That's all you look for. So that means the roots of this equation, if there are rational roots, has to be between negative 1 and 4. You know what I'm talking about? There's nothing outside of that. Again, then somebody said number 8. Mm. I remember this problem was on the last... Last year's quiz. How many people got it? Four people. Takaki, did you get it? Yeah. Five people. Okay, we have a wooden block whose dimensions are n, n plus 3, n plus 9. The surface of the block is painted, and then you're going to cut it up into, uh, you get drawing the back and stuff. So we're going to cut it like a wah, wah. Gonna cut it like this. Sincha, 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 sincha. <coughs> okay, what's the problem now? If exactly half of these cubes have no paint on them, find the dimensions of the original block. Okay, we need to write an equation. Well, first of all, how many total cubes are there here right now? N times n plus three times n plus nine. Okay? Now, half of these blocks don't have paint on them. So if I divide this by 2, what, what should that equal? Is 
the number of blocks that don't have paint on them. Now, how do you figure out how many blocks don't have paint on them? You peel off the skin, right? Like, hey, okay, this, this is N, right? If you take away this side and that side, what's going to be left? N minus 2, right? Okay, this side is N plus 3. If I take away this front and, and take away the back, what's going to be left? N plus 1. And then this is N plus 9. If I take away the top and take away the bottom, what's going to be left? N plus 7. Right? The, Right, because everything inside doesn't have paint on it. The paint is only on the outside blocks. So what you got to do is you got to take away the outside skin. You guys get it? You just, in other words, you're just subtracting two from each dimension because there's a front side and a back side. There's a left side, there's a right side. There's a bottom side, there's a top side. And there you go, that's your equation. Now you got to solve it. No calculator. Okay, I'm going to let you guys solve this on your own. In fact, I do this every single year. Okay, finish this problem. And then when I correct the homework, half the people don't do it. Minus <coughs> five right there. Boom. So I'm just telling you. All you gotta do, multiply it out. This is good algebra practice. Multiply both sides by two, make one side zero, and then do synthetic division. It comes up. But you just gotta do it. Are you sure that's for poly four? I see plenty of these going to be on Monday's quiz. <coughs> that was the time to ask. Okay, number five. Graph and label all points of intersection. This is possibly on the quiz. Y equal x cubed plus 4x squared. Y equal 3x plus 18. What should I do first? Start graphing or find where they intersect? Yeah, find where they intersect because then you can use that to draw your graph, right? So substitute x cubed plus 4x squared equals 3x plus 18. It's a cubic equation, so we're going to make one side 0. So what do you want to do, factor by grouping or synthetic division? Grouping. No, no, I, no, I love factor by grouping. OK, let me ask you this. So how would you split it up then? Uh, how would you split up this 4x squared? Uh, with the 3x. Negative. No, no, you've got to split it. Oh, 2 and 2. Four and one. Four and one. Four and one. I mean three and one. Four and four. Oh yeah, yeah, three and one. Okay, now if you have four sides, I think can you see that this will work? That's gonna work, right? You split up the four x squared into three x squared plus one x squared. Do you guys see that that's gonna work? Because when you group it like this, what can I factor out? And x squared, what's going to be left? x plus 3 plus, and how do you factor this? x minus 6, x plus 3. See, so they have a common factor of x plus 3. See, that's the key. You have to get a common factor here and here in order to, for factor by, by grouping to work. So it's going to be x plus 3, throw on the side. What's left? x squared plus this, which is plus x minus 6. Is that factorable? Yeah, x plus 3 x minus 2. Oh, we got a double root, baby. So x equals negative 3 or 2. Now, if you rather do synthetic division, it doesn't matter. You're going to factor it down. Sooner or later, you're going to get there, right? So there we go. So points of intersection, negative 3 comma something, 2 comma something. How do I get the y coordinates? Plug it back into one of these. Which one looks nicer? Yeah, it is about both the same. Come on. So if I plug in negative 3 there, that's going to be 9. If I plug in 2 there, that's 24. So these are, oh, I'm glad somebody asked this problem because I remember the last 20 years I correct this homework. So many people get minus 2 off this one problem. <laughs> you would have got the answers correct. No, but the graph is not correct. <laughs> what do you mean? Because there's a double root here. There's something happens with a graph when there's a double root. That's why, as opposed to a single root. You guys know what I'm saying? Who noticed it? Park is just scribbling furiously, so I guess not. Okay, let's just draw a graph. So negative three nine. So what kind of scaling should I put here? One, two, three. One, two, three. But on the y-axis, probably we want to go by threes, yeah? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's 24. So each hash mark is three on the y-axis. So negative three, nine, two, twenty-four. 
Okay, so this is a line. That's a line. So come on. Come on. <laughs> line is just straight. Okay, but this is, what kind of graph is that? What the heck? What kind of graph is this? Rhymes with Mubin. <laughs> I'm glad I used the M on that one. X squared times X plus 4. Only I caught that joke. Okay, so what are the X, what are the X intercepts as opposed to another letter? Never mind. What are the X? <laughs> We're filming this! <laughs> You'd say, you can't be saying words like that. 0 and negative 4. <laughs> Just a few letters after M. Okay, anyway. <laughs> so you gotta go through. <laughs> oh my gosh, guys. There you go. Okay, first of all, how did I know you have you were going through this X intercept and bounce off down? Yeah, because look, you got an even power there, you got the first power there. Okay now. How did I know this point of intersection, you, you bounce off each other, but this one, they go through each other? Stop. Yeah, because you, this, one is, this one came from this, which came from a double root. So when you have double root, point of intersection, they bounce off each other. But single root, things just go straight through. See? It all makes sense. And you know what you're going to do next year in calculus? Calculate this area. Exactly. Take that region and revolve it about this line. Take this region, revolve it about this line. That's the kind of stuff you do in calculus. Yeah. Wait, so if we did synthetic division, how would we know which one's like uh, double root and which one's not? Is this April 1st? <laughs> <laughs> this is the September. Huh? Okay, look. Syn syn synthetic division is just. Okay, obviously you guys don't like factor by grouping, I can tell. Okay? Then don't do factor by grouping. Look, yes, sir. Once you get to this equation here, just go to synthetic division. Leave, leave factor by grouping to the professionals. Okay? Not everybody can be royalty. Okay, so let's say, okay, what, what's going to work? Okay, so two. One, two, eight. No, that's six, dummy. Six, twelve. 9, 18, 0. So what does this stand for? x minus 2 times x squared plus 6x plus 9. But then, isn't that just x plus 3 quantity squared? Isn't that the same thing as this? Yeah, but how do you get 2? Yeah. How did I put the 2 in the box? Guess you yeah, you two. guess. I tried 1 first, it didn't work, so next I tried 2. But if you're doing your homework, you know already just by looking one doesn't work, right? Okay, look at this equation. So somebody tell me, why doesn't one work? Because if I plug in one, you get one plus four minus three minus 18. Does that come up to zero? Do I actually have to add up those numbers to see that it's not zero? Five is way, come on, that's negative 21 and five. How can that add up to zero? Or do I have to take out my calculator and check? So one doesn't work, so I move on to two. You know what I'm talking about? Synthetic division, people, is a guess and check method. That's, if you, I'm telling you right now, if you don't practice so that you get good at it, you just going to start crying on Monday. And that's the way This will be up tears on your table. Bring a very absorbent towel. Because I'm, I'm going to tell you right now, number one on the test is I'm going to give you a polynomial equation, except it's going to be degree five or six. You have to find all the roots with no hints. So if you're practiced, it's, it's not that hard, but if you're like a neophyte, like I just said, uh, I'm just copying all the homework off the board. It's, it's all over but the time. Just, just skip that problem already. You guys got to practice. So Callahan, are you practicing? Are you sure? Because that question is like, it's not giving you a way right there. No. Okay, anything else on poly 4? Are you sure? What about the word problems? Everybody can do the word problems? Six, six and okay, that 4, 5, and 6 is from poly 4, then. Or is that from poly 5? I heard somebody say 5. 
It was a female voice from somewhere in the back. But I'm looking, but it's all males. <laughs> so what's up? So Saki, Saka, Saka, Sone, Lee, Lee, Lee. No. So somebody just shout out, come on. So now we're moving on to Poly 5. Yeah. Are you sure? Oh, wait. Well, number three. Hey, didn't we talk about this? Okay, well, I'm glad somebody's asking, because usually it takes more than, you have to see this more than once before you, you get it. Show that this equation has no rational roots, but it does have one between one and two. This is, the probability is like 0.9 these problems on the test. Well, the concept, the concept. Okay, what are the possible rational roots of this equation? Okay, here. You better be able to do this on Monday. What are the possible, why am I writing it? I just looked at possible rational roots, same time. <laughs> Give me the list of possible rational roots just by looking. Go. Plus or minus one, plus or minus three. Can you guys do that? It's factors of this over factors of that, right? And then this one's easy, right? Especially when this one is one, it's, it's so easy, right? Even when it's two, it's easy. But then, what if this one is like 12? Then get plenty, yeah? <laughs> okay, so let me ask you this. Is one a root? Okay, wait, let me plug in. 1 plus 1 minus 3, is that 0? No. no. Okay, is negative 1 a root? For those of you who don't know what a root is, it's a number that makes the equation true. No. Okay, thank you. What about 3? 27 plus 9 minus 3, is that 0? No. What about negative 3? No. no. Yes? Oh, yeah. Who said yes? No. Okay, well, let's try. Negative 27 plus 9 minus 3, is that 0? That's the question. No. no! Who said? I can't believe somebody said yes. These are the possible rational roots, but none of them work. What can we conclude? There are no rational roots. So we finish part A of it. It's a show that it has no rational roots. Because remember, if this equation has rational roots, it has to come from this list. But none of them work. Therefore, the roots must be irrational. Okay, but show that it does have one between one and two. Now, remember I showed you this last time? Here's 1 and 2. If you think of this as a graph, y equal that, then what is the y coordinate when x is 1? Negative. Negative. Right button. Negative 1. Negative 1. Look, oh, oh, I can't believe. Oh. 1 plus 1 <laughs> minus 3 is negative 1. OK, what's the y coordinate at 2? Maybe I should do this. Negative 1. What's the y coordinate at 2? If I plug in. You get 8, here, some of you going, what? 8 plus 4 minus 3. Right, this is mine. 9. Now, if the y coordinate is negative 1 here, and over here it's 9, then to get from here to here, doesn't it have to cross the x axis at least once? We talked about this last time, right? Yeah. Morris, you have no on it, everybody else is doing this. Don't you, do you remember this? No, you go around the x-axis. Remember that one? Well, oh, now I remember. Does everybody understand this concept? To go from negative to positive, you have to cross zero at least one time. Or from positive to negative, you've got to cross zero somewhere in between. This is a super important concept. Yeah? So on the test, we just have to write y1 equals negative 1 and y2 equals 9. Say that it's gotta be oh, no, 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 it's not going to be that easy. you got to understand the concept, and you're going to have to use it yeah, to solve the problem. You know, I'll tell you what, you know, like 20, when we first started this course 20 something years ago, there was no calculator, I mean, graphing calculators. So, you know what the kind of problems we had? Estimate the root to the nearest 10 <laughs> without a calculator. <clears throat> How do you do that? <clears throat> So we're actually have to find that. No, so, okay, maybe we did use a scientific calculator. <laughs> okay, so what you do then, what you do is you, you compute y of 1, then y of 1.1, and then y of 1.2, and then y of 1.3, and then y of 1.4. Now, what am I looking for? You're looking for a change in sign. So let's say this one comes up negative, this one's negative, this one comes up positive. Then what? Yeah, so it's somewhere between 1.2 and 1.3. This is what we used to do in the old days. And then now we've got it there, then now we can go y, 
then we can try y of 1.20, y of 1, 1, 1.21, 0.23. And you can get it as close as you want, except it just takes a long time, right? Yeah. In which part is it possible for that thing to have the open circle thing you're telling us about? Like right on you're right on the, the zero. <laughs> is this April first again? <laughs> These are polynomial functions. <laughs> polynomial functions do not have removable discontinuities. I think we discussed this. <laughs> polynomial functions are always smooth and continuous. They're always continuous. There's no breaks in them. There's no sharp points. They're all smooth and continuous. That's one of the properties of polynomial functions. So no, you cannot have an open circle. That's what you're saying. No, that's okay. Get out the dumb questions now. <laughs> okay, anything else on poly 4? Because poly 5, that's where the good problems are. Okay, we better move on to poly 5. Okay, well, 4, 5, and 6, is that, are you sure that's it? Okay, 4. Oh, so everybody got 2 and 3. Okay. Number 4. Find an integer c so that this equation has a double root. Okay, this, okay, I'll tell you right, Garrett's Bob Aaron, this concept is on the test at least once. Okay, do you remember having something like this last chapter? How many roots does this equation have, first of all? Three. Three. Okay, now watch. How can I label these roots if, it, if there's a double root? What can I call the first one? X. Okay. Why would you call it x when there's x in the thing already? I'm going to call it r for root, okay? okay? Then how do I label the second one? C. R. No, r, because it's a double root. <laughs> Why are you going to use x and c? You don't use x and c. <laughs> okay, now watch. Now watch. How do I label the third root? Anybody? Takaki. He's, he's like butter. He's on a roll today. <laughs> Negative two. Very good. There you go. That's how you label the third root. And some of you going, what? Do you notice that there's no x squared term here? So what does that mean? That means negative b over a is zero. Well, what does negative b over a tell you? The sum of the roots. So if there's no x squared term, that means the sum of the three roots have to add up to zero. So if this is r and this is r, doesn't that one have to be negative 2r because they all have to add up to zero? <laughs> okay, let's just pretend. Okay, let's, pre <laughs> let's pretend we don't know anything. Okay, how r, r, and s then? How's that then? R, r, and s. Okay, now you do the thing we did last chapter. If I add up the three roots of a, a cubic equation, you will get negative b over a, so negative 0 over 4. So doesn't that mean s equals negative 2r already? See, so if you can do that in your head, that saves a step. But you don't have to. You can just do this. And just go through all the things that we learned. If I multiply the roots two at a time, okay, here, let's call it. Now can we write negative 2r? We figured it out. Okay, now what happens when I multiply the roots two at a time? Multiply the first two. R squared. Now the first and the third. Negative 2r squared. squared. The second and the third. What does that give you? That gives you c over a. So c over a. c over 4. And then if I multiply them all three at a time, this times this times this, what do you get? What is this times this times this? Negative 2r cubed. That's equal to negative d over a. So negative d over a. Two equations, two variables, you just solve it. I think pretty much almost all the problems over there, like uh, 2, 3, 4, that's how you solve it. Isn't that how you guys did it for number 2 and 3? Or three at least? Callahan. Yeah. Question. Yeah. Can you guys solve it or you want me to solve it? <coughs> okay, so look at this equation, you can solve it. So R cubed is equal to divide by two. What? Divide by two, negative two. First of all, tell me positive or negative. Positive. No. The three negative signs. A negative times a negative times a negative is a negative. Yeah, I know. The negative <laughs> 27 over 8. eight. Oh, look how nice that comes out. So therefore, r equals negative, negative 3 halves. See how, see how I make the problems come out nice? 
Now that you know what R is, can you just plug it in this equation here to figure out what C is? Do you need me to do it? Just plug it in. Okay, no, I'm not going to do it. Okay, we're moving on. Four, five. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, this is the meat. Okay, so probably could have this. The probability is point, no, point 0.99. This is on Monday's quiz. I'll just change these numbers. What if I change the C to like a K or something? Is that going to throw you off? This doesn't look good. Okay, fine. Five. 2x cubed. Okay, now guaranteed the probability is one. This problem is on the test. The concept, anyway. The three roots of these, this equation are a, b, and c. Find the value of 1 over a plus 1 over b plus 1 over c. Now, am I going to actually find the three roots of this equation? Remember last chapter? You can actually find the two roots of a quadratic equation using the quadratic formula. But now you have to find the three roots of a cubic equation much more difficult. Did anybody try to find the three roots? No. So that's why you've got to use what we learned. If a, b, and c are the three roots, what do we know? a plus b plus c equals? Yeah. Who said so? Negative b over a. That wasn't me. I, was, I didn't say it was you. You were looking at me. <laughs> Negative 3 over 2. If I multiply them 2 at a time, you get c over a. If I multiply 3 at a time, you get negative d over a. Can everybody at least write this down on their paper? OK, now, how do you use this? OK, I'll tell you what. On Wednesday's test, if you write that down, or in the Monday's quiz, I'll give you at least one point. But now you've got to use it to solve the problem. A, if you want. What? Can you, can you tell me? Yeah, you got to show work. OK. Oh, gosh, yeah. Now I forgot what the problem was. 1 over A plus, I thought we were going to finish early today, but I guess not, plus 1 over C. How do I figure out, what, this is like SAT problem. If you see something, what should I do? Yeah, write it in a different form. So what's another way of writing this? What do you do when you add fractions together? No, no, you don't multiply by you make a least common denominator. What goes on the top? What goes on the top? BC plus AC plus AB. AB. Hey, you somebody, huh? <laughs> That's five halves. That's five halves. And then A, look at the denominator. Hey, you somebody, huh? So That's negative seven halves. Multiply top and bottom by two. Negative five sevens is your answer. Do you see how you use this to solve the problem? OK, that was the appetizer. What time is it now? 1.13 minutes. OK, the next one. Write a cubic polynomial equation. OK, we did something like this last chapter. I'm going to show you two ways of doing it. OK? We're going to write an equation whose roots are a minus 1, b minus 1, and c minus 1. Now, remember the thing we, we did yesterday? Assuming a to well, no, this a is different from that a. Maybe I shouldn't have used a, b, and c. Okay, remember this thing we did yesterday? Remember how I give you the three roots, and the fastest way to write the equation is to do this thing over here? Assuming a to be 1. What number goes in here? Were you guys here 24 hours ago? What number goes in there? The sum of the roots. Okay, here are the three roots. What's the sum of that? What goes in here? What's this plus this plus this? A plus B plus C plus 3. Do we know what A plus B plus C is? Yes, it's right here. So this is negative 3. It's minus. Minus 3. And what is that? I'll give you a hint. 3 is 6 halves. Negative 9 halves. That's what you put in there. OK, what number do I put in this box? Multiply the roots two at a time. Okay, multiply these two. Go. A, B, a, B minus A minus B plus 1, correct? Okay, now multiply the first and the third. A, C minus A minus C plus 1. Now multiply the second and the third. B, C minus B minus C plus 1. Using these three things right here, can I figure out what this is? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you somebody, yeah? This one. What's AB plus AC plus BC? Five halves. This is 5 halves. Okay, now, these two here. What is, what is this? 
This is minus 2a minus 2b minus 2c. If I factor out the negative 2, what are you going to get? a plus b plus c. <laughs> a plus b plus c. Hey, you somebody, huh? Look, a plus b plus c is negative 3 halves. And then don't forget that 1 plus 1 plus 1 is 3. So what does this come out to? 5 halves plus 3 plus 3. What is 5 halves plus 6? 6 is 12 halves. 17 halves. That's the number that goes right there. Yes? Did, didn't you say like if like all the roots you subtract from, you can plug in like x minus 1? No, 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 no. We're getting there. I'm showing you this technique because, well, you'll find out later. What goes in here? Quick. You multiply the three roots together. So a minus 1, b minus 1, c minus 1. Now, can you see that this is very difficult? But if you do multiply this out, it'll come out to where you can use these things. Okay, I'm going to save time here. So, yes, this work, this method works all the time. However, is there a better way? Oh, yeah. What did we do last chapter? Oh, yeah. X minus 1. No. X plus no. One. X plus why, one. though? you gotta, you got you to gotta know why. Think of the... Intersect. It rhymes with graph. Graph. The graph. Look, if you have a polynomial equation, and the roots are A, B, and C, what do I have to do to this graph to make the roots become A minus 1, B minus 1, and C minus 1? What do I have to do? I have to shift the graph 1 to the left. How do you shift the graph 1 to the left? F of x plus 1. So all you have to do, where's the original equation? Oh, right here. This is the original equation. All you've got to do is substitute x plus 1 for x, and that's your answer. But you've got to know that to help you. That's the thing. Now, what if on the test, you can't even think of the graph, then you've got to rely on this. This is the, the standard way of doing the problem. Okay? If there's a shortcut, yeah, you can use the shortcut, but maybe there won't be a shortcut of the test. You know what I'm talking about? So you've got to know this method. Okay, we're going to get a little bit of time left, and then we'll see. Oh, this is the problem that separates the sheep from the goats. Oh, why did I erase it? You guys have it on your paper. Part C. <coughs> Find the value of a squared plus b squared plus c squared. Now, last year was the first time I put a hint. There was no hint before. How many people got it? One, two, three, four, five. Oh, six. Very good. Because no, what if there was no hint? Could you have gotten it? <laughs> okay, here's the hint. Write it in a different form. You know, but Mr. Park, I don't know. Well, what happens when you square a plus b plus z squared? What do you get? a squared plus b squared plus c squared plus 2ab plus 2ac plus 2bc. That's what you get when you multiply it out, okay? That there's a c there. Hey, Mr. Park, look at this thing right here. This is the thing we're trying to find. So if I know everything else, then I can solve this problem, right? So what if I solve for this? a squared plus b squared plus c squared is equal to this, a plus b plus c quantity squared, Minus all of this, but can't can you factor out a 2 and you just get AB plus AC plus BC? Do I know what this is? What is A plus B plus C? I had it written right here. Negative 3 halves. What is AB plus AC plus BC? That was 5 halves. Boom, there's your answer. See how good these problems are? Yeah, these, are, these, are, these problems are so choice that they're cherry. What does that mean? And we got one last problem. Go, oh, come on! Are, are you, are you? Okay, this is the April Fool's joke. April Fool! Okay, if we know a point lies on the graph, what do you think I'm going to do with that point? Okay. It rhymes with mug it in. <laughs> plug it in. If I plug in negative 1 for x and 6 for y, you get 6 equal negative a plus b plus c. Okay, plug in the next point, you get 4 equal a plus b plus c. And if you plug in this point, you get 6 equal 8a plus 4b plus c. Solve those three equations and it's done. Or is that the problem? We still having trouble solving equations? Yes or no? Just stare, maybe you won't look at me. <laughs> It's there straight ahead. <laughs> I'm not going to look at it. I'm not making eye contact. <laughs> it's killing me. <laughs> yes or no? Do you want me to solve it? No. Yeah, no. Yes. <laughs> that wasn't Ching's voice. Change. No, I know Al's voice already. Look, the coefficients of
of C are all one. So if you just subtract one from, okay, I'll do it. Okay, too late. This minus that, go. This minus that. Two, two equal negative two A, A equal negative one. Now I'll go this minus that. Seven A plus three B equal two. But I already know A is negative one, so three B equals nine, B equals three. Once you get A and B, plug it into A and B straight to figure out C. No, when the coefficients of one variable are all one, it can't be easier than that. You just subtract one from the other. Oh boy. Okay, the bell's gonna ring in two minutes already. No, one and a half minutes. So, I think I told you the whole quiz already. Yeah, I think I did. Is it? Is it just the same as I like your shirt. Wow.